What's the crack everyone? It's Nathan here, aka The Rambling Kern and Head Instructor of Kern School of Combat. So today's video, as the title suggests, is on the topic of the Irish Pike and were there any types of pike unique to Ireland? And more importantly, were there any pikes that were associated with the Irish and used predominantly by the Irish? Um, and obviously this is going to fall into different age brackets um, and periods of history. So I'm going to go through that um, and then kind of show you the ones that we would say are uh, associated with the Irish and kind of fall under that umbrella. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get some questions as to what happened to my finger. Um, I broke this in judo the other week, so hence the uh, the splint on at the moment. So if you're wondering, that's why. Um, and of course, if anyone would like to um, sponsor my work, you will find my Patreon down in the description. And obviously, if you want to try classes in Irish martial arts, um, you'll be able to find that there as well. So this video um, is going to touch on basically the 18th and 19th century. Um, Pikes prior to that were basically the same as you would have found in continental Europe. However, as we progress into the 1700s and the 1800s, there are types that become unique to Ireland and then types that become like almost uh, uniquely linked with Irish Repub republicanism and Irish independent independence movements um, and almost become a symbol of rebellion in their own right. Um, and you will see this all across Ireland, like I mentioned, the various statues that you see across Ireland itself. So I'm going to touch on a handful of types and just kind of discuss them and also bring up some examples of both um, actual surviving examples and ones that have come up in auction houses. And just going to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So the probably the most common and the most well-known will be the classic um, straight head with a uh, curved... Um, what's often I see called a bridle cutter on the side. Now this type um, I see come up um, constantly and this is probably the type that you would see the most in Irish uh, statues and across Irish towns um, and you see depicted in a huge amount of artwork. So this is definitely one that was hugely associated with Ireland. Why this type became so predominant I don't know um, but I found a very interesting breakdown on the topic and just kind of a, a research piece um, written in Galway in the 1940s. I'll link that in the description as well. Now one thing that they point out which is interesting to consider when we talk about the pike and it is very true and it's a big difference between um, the kind of halberd formations and the pike formations that we see uh, develop over Europe and this is kind of why I wanted to touch on earlier um, weaponry to kind of give you guys a broader context of why the pike worked and why even into much later periods it continued to work. So in earlier periods, what you had was essentially a, a mass of infantry. Um, often they would have halberds because when they get into close range, they're going to have to swing down on opponents. And it was more um, infantry versus infantry. However, the pike itself was predominantly being used to counteract cavalry. And when guns became more um, ubiquitous on the battlefield, then you saw a much sharper increase in um, pike usage, mainly because pikes were the ideal place for a gunner to hide. And as time progresses, the increased amount of gunners to pikemen kind of goes up, and then eventually the bayonet takes over, and then obviously we have the kind of um, later period, um, you know, uh, infantry formations that we'd be used to, say, in the like Napoleonic era. However, if we look at the 16th century and, you know, later you see the mass formation of pikes with um, gunners and you know various different troops layered in between them and this is something that kind of continued and this was something that was taught and learned in Ireland at the time I'm going to touch on that in its own right but the reason why I wanted to discuss this was because obviously with time um, for most infantry you know in actual standard trained armies the um, bayonet was the weapon of choice. Now, kind of getting back to the point I was talking about, when we discuss the use of pikes and halberds, um, the primary difference here is that one has to be swung. So if you have a halberd, say, you know, we all understand that if you have an axe head, it's much better off to be swung. Now you do see pike heads with small little axe heads on them, and this is the second type of pike head that we often see. So this really shows between the three kind of predominant types that we have, it kind of shows that one of their big concerns was cavalry. 
Now, right up to World War I, World War I cavalry was being used and was a big concern on the battlefields of Europe um, because untrained troops could be very easily broken apart by a bunch of cavalry, especially if they were well-trained um, soldiers. Now, one of the things that you'll see in all the examples that I'm bringing up is that they often have a hook on them, often would be used for hooking um, cavalry and trying to drag them from their horse. One thing you will notice, however, is the small little axe heads. Now, were these being swung? I don't really know, um, is the honest answer. The main reason I say that is because with a pike, you obviously have the issue of length. You know, if your pike is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 foot, it's going to be very difficult to swing that with any sort of accuracy. Obviously, there's going to be a huge amount of power, but, you know, how are you going to lift that? And especially if you're in a large formation, how are you going to get much effect out of that? So that also makes me think that a lot of those pikes were demi-pikes, like I mentioned in my previous video, kind of half-length pikes that were very common, um, very common across the period because people needed a more portable version of a pike, something that they could actually, you know, hide away and run out and use when the opportunity and necessity arose. So these two, the hooked and the kind of axe, uh, almost halberd-like heads, are two very, very common ones you see. Obviously, the other one is just a standard pike. Now, there's loads of different variations of these. Um, generally, the split tangs, in other words, that means a tube is uh, you know, formed by two pieces basically opened out and then rolled around each other. Um, these are probably the most common types that you will see. However, there is a third type, which I find quite interesting, which is basically a, a plug bayonet modified into a pike. Now, what does that mean? Basically, uh, I'll bring up a video because I don't actually have a uh, useful knife on hand. But essentially what it means is a plug bayonet was a bayonet that you would shove into the barrel of a rifle um, or a musket. And basically what that would do is, you, you, yes, it would generally render your um, gun inert, but you would now be able to use it effectively as a spear until the bottle was over and you could get it removed. Often what you've seen is these can then get adapted into pike heads. So obviously there was uh, a recognition that superior steel was being used for these, you had better blades available on them, and then people were obviously either getting hold of them, um, perhaps illegally or maybe even legally, maybe there was ex-soldiers who had kept hold of these and were using them for pikes. However, it is something that we do see pop up time and time again. Um, now I'm going to show uh, some examples of artwork, um, of depictions of these, and obviously depictions of uh, plug bayonets themselves, so you actually get a look at what I'm talking about. Now. These kind of four types are what generally became known as the Irish Pike. And there's even a later attempt at a, a knife to kind of mirror the, the shape of these for um, members of various Irish Republican uh, groups. Now, I find this very fascinating that this became so recognized across Ireland that it became like a very much a recognized symbol of republicanism and rebellion. Um, and like I said, the Pike continued use all the way up into the 20th century. Um, so it kind of shows you how prevalent and important it was. Now, obviously, the majority of the reason why this is being used is kind of down to two major factors. One, cost, getting hold of weaponry, um, especially with the various things going on in Ireland throughout this period, it was very difficult and very costly, whereas making a pike head really isn't. And two is training. Not just getting the training from you know, a military standpoint, but actually getting the training without being found out. You know, a lot of these people were... Um, basically going about rebellion in secret. You know, don't really do a rebellion out in the open. Um, so a lot of these people were having to train in secret. And it's not a very easy thing to train um, musketry in secret. It was done in later periods and obviously it was done at the time as well, but it's a very difficult thing to do. Now, I just wanted to touch on this video as a quite a quick one, but basically just to give you guys an overview of, yes, a pike is a pike is a pike. Um, you know, I got a lot of comments on that and obviously you guys are, are completely correct. The you know, the, the best sort of stick is a pointy stick and put a steel head on, on it and it's a wonderful thing. But in Ireland, there was unique pike heads that became recognized amongst the Irish and used by the Irish. So it's kind of a, a small thing. And yes, we're not going to get a, a major typography or anything like that and all the, you know, a, a huge array of different pike heads. There was very much a handful that were obviously very effective and needed to be distributed amongst the Irish quickly, so they need to be manufactured quickly and then dealt out to those who needed them. 
Now, like I said in my previous video, if anyone knows anyone who can make me a pike head, um, or anyone knows any talented smiths who could do something like that, please do let me know. I am looking to get some made so they can test them out. Uh, I have a number of videos in mind and things I would really like to try out because uh, there's a lot of stuff, um, kind of rumors and myths around pike and spear use that I would really like to actually test out and see if they work. Obviously it's going to take a little while because I'm getting over this finger injury, but um, hopefully not too long. Obviously, like I said, uh, if you guys want to sponsor my work, you'll find my Patreon down below. Um, if you'd like to uh, come to a class, um, again, you'll find that down there as well. And I'll link that article as well um, on the Pike and its history in Ireland. Now, i um, going to be working through the series over the next few months. Obviously, if there's any particular uh, events or topics you guys would like to see, please do let me know. I'm more than happy to discuss them. Uh, last video was a big success, so huge thank you to everyone. If you haven't already, please do um, give us a subscribe and a like. It costs you um, only a few seconds of your time and it really does help out the channel. Thank you all once again so very much. Um, the channel is just growing phenomenally and you guys are the ones to thank for it all. So thank you very, very much and slum.